Hello everyone, I'm Elf Owls, and welcome to a Wooper Club match analysis for the Newport Noct Owls. Last time, I went over my draft picks for the Wooper Club's Season 10, featuring low tiers, where, as you can see here, I drafted Decidueye, Alolan Raichu, Noivern, Mudsdale, Blaziken, Pincurchin, Perserker, Aromatisse, Kangaskhan, Lapras, and Thievul in that order. This time, I'm heading into Week 1 of the season, facing off against Joey of the Akron Agrons. Going by speed tiers from top to bottom, I am dealing with a team of Excelgore, Cryagonal, Moltres, Thwacky, Slurpuff, Hitmontop, Stunjourner, Lantern, Sandslash, Turtonator, and Bronzong. My short history with Joey in regular draft includes our Season 8 semifinals match, in which we both brought really bulky teams and pivoted around until Joey's Pokemon just got chipped down a little too much and I managed to snag the victory. This time, though, I'm actually pretty worried since I brought a team that's potentially a lot less resilient than the one I had for our last match. Uh, it's a lot more of an offensive style now. Meanwhile, Joey is looking like he can play a great defensive pivot game still, with team members like Bronzong, Lantern, Sandslash, or Cryagonal taking hits pretty well, not to mention his offensive presence with some potentially really strong choice abusers or setup sweepers. Uh, speaking of which, let's get into Joey's team and what I'm most afraid of in team building. First off, I think I'm losing the Hazards game in the Team Builder. I only have Mudsdale to set rocks, uh, and only one other Hazard setter, while Joey has Bronzong as a very easy rock setter, Excelgor as a potential Hazards lead, Sandslash and Stunjourner are backup setters, and stick Sticky Webs from Sur Slurpuff is even a kind of a problem. Uh, that's a huge advantage for him, having so many options for Hazards, so we'll see what we can do to work around that. As far as individual threats go, I think the big standout here is Moltres, uh, which is something that I actually had my eye on in the initial draft because it just brings so much power to the table. It has just a really good stat distribution for the, the format. Uh, it, has, it also just has a really good matchup against the team, uh, with Fire Flying being perfect neutral coverage for my entire team, uh, and it also has plenty of bulk to fight off Noivern and puts a halt to Decidueye and Blaziken trying to wall break. I think Moltres does have its weaknesses that I can exploit, after all, I didn't draft it for a couple of reasons. With its quad weakness to rock, it's essentially forced to run heavy duty boots, and it also has to be afraid of random rock coverage against a well-prepped team, because that's just a problem in Draft League. So I think Moltres is actually a bit worse in Draft League than I initially gave it credit for in, in the uh, original draft. The, the weaknesses it has turn me off of using it for myself, of course, uh, and it helps us play around the threat, but of course it is still a threat. Uh, the other big offensive threat I'm looking at is Slurpuff, with Unbird and Belly Drum uh, being a great sweeping set that's always a huge pain to deal with. Uh, it's definitely going to be supported by Thwacky, uh, Grassy Terrain activating that Grassy Seed to proc the Unburden, uh, so I'm expecting these two to come as an offensive core. Thwacky's Grassy Terrain also disrupts my own terrain strategies, so we're going to see how that plays out as well. All of the other uh, potential, potential Pokemon on Joey's team, uh, the brings are kind of up in the air for me. Uh, but I think Joey needs a solid defensive backbone to support that offense that I talked about. Bronzong helps a lot with that, switching well into some of my best offensive options like Noivern and Raichu. Uh, it's also a really annoying hazard setter since I can see situations in which it matches into Mudsdale and sets rocks for free while I have to switch out uh, and can't set my own rocks because I'm fearing a Toxic or something like that. Uh, or it could also match into Noivern and hit extremely hard with a Gyro Ball to discourage a Taunt or a Defog on, on those hazards. Uh, so for that Stealth Rock potential, I I'm betting on Bronze on coming. It seems very good against my team. Next, I feel like an Electric Immunity is sure to come as well, and for Joey, that's either the form of Lantern or Sandslash. I feel like Sandslash is mostly outclassed by Bronzong for taking hits uh, and setting rocks, uh, even though it can go for Rapid Spin as well, uh, but I'm just not expecting it uh, that much. Lantern, though, is really solid for absorbing moves from my two Electric types, and harassing the rest of my team with Volt Switch and potential status, uh, things like Scald or Thunder Wave. Uh, very annoying to deal with, and I, I think this is a for sure bring. Uh, the last big threat I'm looking at is Hitmontop. It is a decent fighting type, but between the fighting moves and Technician Boosted Triple Axle, which is a very strong Ice type move uh, coming off of t uh, Hitmontop, it theoretically hits my team so hard uh, with just that coverage. Intimidate. Uh, is an option over Technician on its abilities to take a hit from my faster Pokemon and fire back hard. Uh, so just with it posing such a threat, which is two move slots, uh, it could get some free turns off of my four switches uh, so that it could get so off something like a Rapid Spin. Uh, very scary and annoying to deal with. 
those are all the main problem Pokemon I'm trying to handle. Uh, but as for the rest, Excelgore and Kragonal are the two fastest threats. They're definitely good, so like solid, fast support options with pretty nice coverage for me. Uh, I won't be discounting them. I, I just have pretty solid answers without going out of my way too much. Uh, and then Turknator is like the other potential sweeper of Joey's team. Uh, of course, he gets Shell Smash, but I don't think it'll enjoy dealing with my very fast offensive team this time around. Uh, so I, I'm not expecting it too much. Uh, and then I didn't even have to think about Stunjorner in team building because I have a Mudsdale. Spoiler alert for one of my brings, I guess. So after a thorough analysis of Joey's team, here's what I decided to bring. So Decidueye was the first Pokemon I decided to use since the Agrons actually have zero ghost resists or immunities on the entire team. That's insanely good for our first draft pick, Decidueye who can slap on a Twist Scarf, which is what we're bringing this week, and start hammering things with Poltergeist. Since I don't actually need coverage, Spirit Shackle is there as a more consistent move to spam, and Leaf Blade helps us deal with Lantern and Sand Slash a little better. Uh, U-Turn is obviously great on a Scarf set for scouting, uh, in case I need to get to some damage and switch out. <clears throat> the Speed with a Scarf uh, outspeeds Timid Cryogonal, since I... I don't even want to try guessing how much speed Excelgore would be running. Trying to outspeed max speed at Excelgore would be just too much investment. Uh, and Long Reach helps as the ability against things like Flame Body Moltres or random Rocky Helmets. Uh, with this set, we outspeed almost every relevant threat, and Poltergeist hits everything so hard, even without the boosting item for the attack stat. Uh, get some really cool calcs. It 2 hit KOs most Moltres sets, and we only need a little bit of chip to outspeed in 1 hit KO Kragonal and Bronzong, which is great. Uh, the defensive utility is also great here, since I'm pretty afraid of Lantern as a, an annoyance, and this is why I can use this grass typing well to make a pretty good switch into it. Oh, okay. Next is Noivern, which is going to be a pretty important support piece for me. Uh, Defog is the main point of bringing Noivern, since I know Joey can set up a ton of hazards in this match. Uh, and I'm building Noivern to actually be a pretty decent answer against his potential hazard setters. Uh, boots are of course expected from a hazard remover, and HP investment is enough for us to take two choice spec Sludge Bombs from Excelgore. So that means we take pretty trivial damage from an Excelgore uh, that's not a boosting item if it's like trying to set hazards. Uh, Super Fang is the option to hit Bronzong for lasting damage, and Draco Meteor does a ton of damage to Sand Slash and Stone Joiner, if not just KOing them outright. Right. Uh, we're also running Frisk as the ability to help scout things out, and Roost as our last move slot is just for longevity. Next slot is Mudsdale, which is here as my main physical wall and stealth rocker. We invested a little bit in special defense as well, and that lets us take two hurricanes from Moltres so we can get a chance to hit it back hard. We're running high horsepower for stab over Earthquake, since Earthquake is weakened by grassy terrain. And Smackdown is coverage that also gets rid of Bronzong's Levitate, so you can potentially smack it with a high horsepower in the next turn. Toxic is nice to help break things down if I can't get off a good stab move. Uh, and Muzdale is just a really important check to a few things just existing on the team. Uh, with Stamina, it switches very well into Hitmontop. Uh, even a Technician-boosted Triple Axle won't do too much since Stamina activates for the defense boost between hits. Muzdale also works great as an easy answer to Sand Slash. And it's a free answer to Sunjourner, as I said earlier. Uh, we're running a few speed EVs there as well, and that actually creeps a uh, completely uninvested Turtonator, since it just doesn't cost us much to do that. Next up is Lapras with heavy duty boots uh, and a full specially defensive set, because I'm very afraid of Moltres and this checks it fairly well. Max special defense is actually needed to switch into Moltres attacks, since any less and we'd fall into range of getting 3 hit KO'd by Hurricane. Rest is our option to heal up and continue avoiding that 3 hit KO from Hurricane, and our ability for this week is actually Shell Armor, uh, because it synergizes decently well with rest stalling, avoiding crits, if it comes down to that. Water Absorb is usually the much better ability for Lapras, but the only water type moves from Joey's team I think are coming from Lantern, which I have no plans of switching into with Lapras. Uh, especially with Rest, I'm, I'm not that desperate for the Water Absorb recovery. And, and yes, I know Rest doesn't work under Electric Terrain, but I just like having the option at least, we're not going to depend on it or anything, uh, and we can at least control when our terrain goes up. Heal Bell is nice in the last slot to support the rest of the team. It makes me feel better about Mudsdale potentially getting poisoned by Bronzong, or Decidueye switching into a Scald from Lantern, uh, 
and then as the coverage surf and freeze dry just get perfect neutral coverage if i need to go on the offensive with lapras this brings us to the terrain core of the team which i am so excited to use under electric terrain raichu nukes everything with choice specs boosted rising voltage and volt switch is there to keep up momentum as well uh, the only coverage we need is to hit the electric immunities of Lantern and Sandslash, since even resisted rising voltage uh, will be doing more than a neutral hit against everything else. I went with Psyshock to hit Lantern harder, since I'm expecting it more than Sandslash. In the last slot, I just went with Witch, since it was just a free move slot, and I can use it to heal something like Decidueye or Mudsdale if we get into a pinch. Raichu also relieves a ton of pressure in team building, uh, since it's uh, as long as it's around uh, under terrain, Slurpuff will never get a full sweep against us since we easily outspeed and KO with a rising voltage. Uh, we probably won't be sweeping since Thwacky disrupts us pretty hard with switching up the terrain, uh, so I'm, ha I'm happy with building this set as more of a breaker and an offensive check to certain specific threats. In the last slot, uh, we're obviously trying to support Raichu here. We have Pincurchin, Running Leftovers, and a physically defensive set. Electric Surge is obviously the main idea here, uh, but Pinkurchin has some utility. It's potentially my best switch into Thwacky, uh, resetting the terrain and taking any hit really well after removing that grass type terrain boost. Uh, I don't know how many free turns we'll get with this guy, but Spikes is a solid option, especially against the Thwacky potentially. Uh, and since I had a free move slot at the end, I decided to run Electric Terrain as a move. Uh, this seems a little weird given I already have Electric Surge, uh, but I do want to win that terrain more really bad, and now we have the potential to use this move in odd situations. Like, for example, seeing Thwacky switch in to get the terrain advantage, and immediately getting to change it back. Uh, we're also running a little bit of special defense investment, uh, and that's just to take hits a little better from Lantern. Uh, our physical defense investment is still plenty to hit, take hits from Thwacky. Uh, so this was actually a pretty easy list of brings to decide on. My other main considerations included Blaziken as a wall breaker, uh, but honestly Decidueye was good enough on its own uh, as a strong attacker given that there's no ghost resist. <laughs> Blaziken uh, is just stopped a little too hard by faster threats like Moltres, and it's too prediction reliant if I give it a choice scarf. Uh, Kangaskhan was another option as a good bulky attacker, uh, but there were a few too many normal resists on Joey's side for that to be something I wanted to use. Um, and all my lower tier picks outside of what I talked about, uh, this didn't have the matchup this time, and that's okay. With all that said, let's go ahead and get into the battle. So, this is actually a very different team from the one I prepped for. No Lantern is absolutely amazing for us, since I was so worried about that being an annoying wall to deal with. Hitmontop is also kind of a relief being gone, uh, it relieves some pressure off of Mudsdale to take hits. And No Bronzong is also really interesting as well. Uh, since I, I really thought Joey would want that as a way to switch into certain threats, but it seems like he brought Sandslash instead as his defensive rock setter. It's unfortunate that we didn't prep too much for Sandslash, but I think I'll still take it over Bronzong. It's a much better matchup for Mudsdale. And with both Excelgore and Cryogonal being brought, this looks like a much more fast-paced team than the one I was expecting. Uh, I'm looking at the potential lead slots, and I think Excelgore is always a pretty likely lead to set hazards, so I decide Noivern is going to be a good lead on my end to handle it, and it also handles the potential Thwacky trying to set terrain on turn 1. Good luck to Joey, let's get into it. So, we do see the Excelgore lead, and Frisk reveals the Focus Sash, meaning this was probably a dedicated lead. Uh, with the Focus Sash, Draco Meteor definitely won't kill, obviously, and kind of turns me into a sitting duck, so I decide that Super Fang is a good option to break Sash, and we can still defog the hazards on the next turn while posing a threat to anything that switches in. Uh, instead though, we see Excelgore go for Yawn, and I just miss a, a Super Fang. Uh, that's pretty unfortunate, but uh, we have to move on, we just need to find a switch out. Uh, so I'm going to say Pinkurchin is the answer, in part because that electric terrain will block more Yawn attempts, uh, but Excelgore this time is just going to go for the spikes, which makes sense. Uh, well, we see Excelgore go for U-turn, and on this turn I wanted to break the Sash, so I was going for Rising Voltage. Um, but since he does pivot out, he gets to go into Thwacky, and he res resets the terrain and takes the hit pretty well. Uh, I, I like the recovery I'm getting, though, with the Leftovers and Grassy Terrain here, almost back up to full, which is great. 
uh, but I need a switch into Thwacky because I do not want to take a grass move right now. So uh, Norburn is going to be the switch in, and Frisk reveals the Eevee Light uh, as I take a knockoff and get my boots removed. Uh, Defog is going to be the play here, I want to get rid of the spikes. Uh, and Joy stays in, he reads this pretty well by going out to a U-turn and threatening me out with Cryogonal. Uh, this unfortunately has to be another free turn for Joey since I can't really risk keeping Noivern in on an ice move. Uh, so I am just going to try to make the switch into Lapras. And he does indeed use that free turn to get up a light screen. Next turn is a knockoff as I just go for a surf and only do 10% damage with it. I actually don't mind that chip damage since it puts it in range for Decidueye later. Uh, but right now I'm actually playing pretty passive. Uh, I would have loved to bring Toxic on this Lapras, but I just wasn't prepping for Cryogonal uh, when I was looking at this Lapras, which was kind of dumb. Uh, but I'm just going to keep attacking, I guess, and Joey switches out to Thwacky. As another know, the Surf does just about nothing. Uh, and then Terrain heals us both up a bit, which is nice to keep me near full. Uh, so in to Thwacky, Pincursion is an E switch to reset Terrain, and Thwacky just U turns out. Uh, here and then goes into Sand Slash, uh, which is a problem matchup for me. As I switch out to Mudsdale, Sand Slash is going to get up his rocks, uh, which, you know, we will take it for now because I get to do things against Sand Slash as Mudsdale. Um, I, as I take a knockoff, I manage to get a Toxic on the Sand Slash, which is great. Uh, since I can't actually hit Sand Slash that hard without making a big risk with some of my other Pokemon, uh, so whittling it down over the game will actually be very nice. Uh, with the stamina boost, um, I I have my item knocked off too. I know a switch is coming since Saint Slash can't do much to me anymore. Uh, so Stealth Rock is going to be the play this turn. Uh, and as he switches to Excelgore, I do get them up. Uh, I actually stay in to try to nail this thing with a Smackdown, and I hit it with an Energy Ball uh, and get down to just a little under 40 percent as i do nail a smackdown uh it's unfortunate that a turn one miss means this excel gore is still alive right now uh but at least it's revealed its full move set and it doesn't really have a way to deal with noivern with only energy ball and u-turn as attacking moves uh, so noivern is gonna be my switch here and i take just about nothing uh from anything you can do and it does go for an energy ball and i live pretty handily uh, the next u-turn doesn't do much either and Joey brings in Sand Slash as I just decided to roost up. Now, uh, I think a Rapid Spin is pretty likely from Sand Slash here, uh, but my calcs are telling me that a Draco Meteor uh, has the possibility to KO from this range, so I just decided to go for that and try to stop the Rapid Spin from happening. And unfortunately, uh, we do see the Draco bring it down to 5%, Sand Slash barely hangs on, uh, but then it just goes for Stealth Rock um, and goes down to Toxic. Joey was expecting me to go for Defog there, uh, it would have been a cheeky play, uh, he got Rocks up as I Defogged, um, but I I don't know, regardless, uh, Sand Slash does go down without Toxic damage. So our first KO of the season goes to Mudsdale, actually. Kragonal is in to threaten the Revenge and also takes that nice Rocks damage. Uh, and I, I switched into Sidewide here. I actually, before I did this, I took my time uh, deciding what to do about the Cryagonal. Uh, Lapras would make a great switch into the obvious ice move, uh, but I didn't want to make a play that passive again. I had decided that Joey was probably going to be taking advantage of the free turn from the switch, like he did last time. Uh, so I made this aggressive switch into Decidueye to block a potential rapid spin, uh, and we see that the Cryagonal just goes for light screen. Uh, well, I should outspeed here, easy, and I have no problem going for Poltergeist, uh, which will outspeed and get the KO, uh, also conveniently revealing that the Cryogonal was holding a Light Clay, which is good to know for those that Light Screen that's still up. Uh, Thwacky's coming in here, uh, I don't want to take a knockoff, so uh, after he says train, I just switch out to Noivern, uh, but Thwacky does just go for the U-turn out and comes into Slurpuff, which pops a Grassy Seed uh, to get plus one defense with Unburden behind Light Screen. Uh, this really isn't great. I, I wasn't thinking about this possibility right here, uh, which I'll admit is kind of dumb on my part uh, because this obviously was a huge threat that I should have been considering a little more. Uh, but the goal now 
is to get electric terrain up and then safely get Raichu in to stop any kind of sweep from happening. First, I want to pr put pressure on the Slurpuff trying to set up. So as it makes a move, it goes for Substitute. Uh, I actually went for Super Fang here just to get for good damage uh, and break the Substitute. I actually didn't know how that interaction would work. Uh, I thought Super Fang might do damage based on the sub's HP, only do half to that. Uh, but I was relieved to see that I did break the, the sub. Uh, I, on this next turn, I decided to go for another Super Fang to potentially break another sub, uh, potentially just force a HP to go down uh, on this guy. Um, but Joey uh, just ends that kind of mind game and goes to the player to take me out. Uh, the next step is to bring in Pincursion to change the terrain back to mine. There we go. Uh, and so once I'm in, a calc shows me that a rising voltage should be doing around 40%, uh, even behind screens. That's enough to pressure the Slurpuff out of using Belly Drum, which is great. Uh, so it does indeed not go for Belly Drum. It goes for a Drain Punch instead of setting up. Uh, and then a rising voltage gets the crit through the light screen and we take the KO. Uh, <laughs> that is some rough luck for Joey, uh, but I don't know how far that Slurpuff was getting at that point anyway. Like I said, Rising Voltage uh, was pretty good pressure to stop any Belly Drums from happening in the first place. So uh, at this point, Swatwaki comes in to reset the terrain again, and uh, I know I'm bulky enough to take a hit and recover up, which I want to do right now. Um, but Thwacky reveals Taunt, uh, which stops me from recovering. I didn't even know Thwacky could get Taunt, uh, but at this, you know, there it is. I can't recover, uh, and at this rate, I can't stay in to hit a weak rising voltage because that's my only offensive option. Uh, and I'm also kind of out of switch-ins to Thwacky, so it's time for a sack. Uh, I think the low health Mudsdale is the clear choice here, since it won't be taking any more hits at this point, uh, so I just decide to switch out to it. And we do indeed take the move, it's a grassy glide, and we go down. Uh, so at this point, we're kind of in a rough position. Uh, I do have the switch advantage at this moment, and I'm leading the game 4-3, uh, but I don't have much left that takes on Thwacky very well, uh, so I'll need to play carefully around it. I decide to bring in Decidueye, uh, because U-turn will be good damage while also avoiding the follow-up knockoff. Uh, so I do go ahead and use that U-turn, uh, pivot out into Pincursion to get that terrain advantage again, uh, and I take the knockoff decently well uh, while getting my terrain back up. Um, so Decidueye is the answer to come back in here, since I figured uh, the Thwacky was probably not going to be running another knockoff, uh, would do something else. Uh, so this was a hard switch back in, kind of another aggressive play with Decidueye. Um, and Joey, uh, with that, is just going to U-turn out into Excelgore. Uh, but I know this thing can't take me out with its moveset. Uh, it U-turns out here, I believe. Yes. I live that, and it goes into Moltres, which uh, takes half from Stealth Rocks. Uh, so that was a surprise for me. And then uh, I just Spirit Shackle for the uh, two a KO from this range, uh, taking it down to 4%. Um, I think Spirit Shackle was actually a misplay here, since we missed the KO and would have ha had missed the two a KO if the Moltres had brought its boots to the match. Uh, now we might be vulnerable to a potential scort, uh, Scarf Moltres, uh, but uh, we're just going to have to deal with it. We could have clicked Poltergeist for the KO, which, yeah, I should have done that. Um, but at this rate, I can't do much other than stay in. Uh, so I just go for another Spear Shackle, and I do outspeed the Moltres and take it out. Uh, so I do have to wonder what kind of set that Moltres was running, if it wasn't Boots or Scarf, uh, but I'm glad I didn't really have to deal with it. So yeah, Thwacky's in again, uh, this makes sense. Um, and despite my lead being even bigger now with this low health Thwacky and Excelgore not even uh, being able to switch into rocks anymore, uh, this is still a losable game. Uh, Pincursion has been worn down. Decidueye is definitely going down to a priority glassy, Grassy Glide, and Raichu could take a ton of damage from Grassy Glide as well. Uh, the goal at this point is to find a position where Thwacky is forced to play under Electric Terrain, uh, which shouldn't be too hard considering it's, it's basically his only Pokémon left. Um, he has a little bit of wiggle room with sacking the Acelgore, uh, but we are going to try to play around that. Uh, so the plan starts with Decidueye, excuse me, staying in and getting sacked off 
to a grassy glide. So that's the Decidueye going down. And we are going to bring in Pink Urchin uh, as the revenge. So we get terrain back up. Uh, and after a lot of time <laughs> passing by, I took my time with this turn. Uh, I was calculating some of the Thwacky's previous moves. I determined that it is max attack Jolly at best. Uh, and with that, it actually can't KO me from this range with a Grassy Glide. Uh, that makes Recover the option I want to go with, but I even hesitated a lot on that decision. Taunt would have been devastating here if Joey went for it, uh, but I had to click uh, Recover to heal back up in order to cover the Thwacky either attacking or switching out to Excel Gore. Uh, turns out, Dota is both. Uh, Thwacky uses U turn to switch out to Sack Excel Gore to Rocks, and we do get Recover to get our HP back. Thwacky comes back in. Uh, and resets that terrain back. Uh, but what he doesn't know is that I'm carrying electric terrain. Uh, so, Grassy Glide does pretty good damage into me, but then I pull out the tech and uh, reset terrain in my favor before the next Grassy Glide hits on the next turn. Uh, it's weakened, so it does not KO me, and then a boosted Rising Voltage takes the game 3-0. Good game to Joey. Uh, I had never seen Terrain Wars play out quite to that extent before, uh, but it was super fun to see. Uh, the Wacky was of course going to be support for Slurpuff, uh, but I guess I just wasn't prepared for it as a threat in its own right. Uh, Joey played it incredibly well, pivoting in and out to get the terrain advantage and even forcing Noivern to go down to Slurpuff, uh, making Thwacky way more threatening later in the game. Uh, playing around it was one of the most intense endgames I have ever had to deal with in Draft League, uh, so good stuff to Joey for making a 20 point mod work so well for him. On my end, uh, I'm glad I picked up the pace of my play a little bit in the mid game. I, I feel like my defensive switches were pretty passive uh, early on in the early turns, uh, but I was able to change things up later with some aggressive switches to Decidueye to break things down, uh, and that really paid off by giving me the lead uh, going into the later turns. I had enough sacks to work with uh, as we ended the game. Another thing to note is that although Raichu never entered the battle, I think its presence affected my gameplay quite a bit. With Raichu sitting in the back, I knew I had a backup check to any fast threat, in particular that slur Slurpuff. Uh, so I think that skewed a lot of risk-reward situations into my favor, uh, so I started winning certain interactions as the game went on. So, yeah, uh, this was just a good game, and I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, looking forward to week two, where I play Steve. That's actually tomorrow, so look forward to that video. Uh, I will see you all next time.